So you want an electric yacht? Well, you have some choices to make. Hello, everybody. I am Nick, the naval architect. You've decided that you want the electric yacht. You have done your due diligence and sorted out myth from fact. Excellent. Now it's time to make the big purchase. Actually, purchase says multiple. This isn't like buying a used car where it only comes in the color that you see. Going electric, it requires you to design a whole custom electric system for your ship. It's more akin to building a custom home. Don't worry, we can organize this. The challenge with electric systems is the interaction. The requirements for just one minor component may determine the key settings for the whole system. Well, that strategy can leave you lost and confused if you don't have some sort of organization behind it. So today I'm going to cover some of the key settings for your electric system. After deciding these points, the complexity of shopping should simplify into a few simple paths. Before we get into this, I want to give an acknowledgement and thanks to Jeff Cote from Pacific Yacht Systems. He provided a lot of the background information that I use to create these presentations. Uh, if you're interested, I highly recommend that you check out his website and his YouTube channel. He has plenty of videos on electric systems. I also have to give a quick acknowledgement to the guys from Hybrid Marine UK. Uh, they let me use several of the graphics from their website in creating this video. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm a naval architect, which means that I know many of the details of electric systems, but not all of the finer points. So take my advice as a starting point, but always hire an expert to give you the final solution. The first choice, picking the voltage for the DC system. Don't be afraid to go over 48 volts. Initially, all of the electric vendors wanted to stay under 50 volts for their DC voltage. And this was for two reasons. In the electrical world, low voltage is generally considered to lack the strength for a fatal electric shock. The human body alone offers enough resistance to avoid instant death. Now, due to that premise, most electrical codes get lax when they start talking about systems that are under 50 volts. And this laxity in the electrical codes is the second reason for low voltage systems. But low voltage does not mean low risk. Did you hear the words instant death? Well, even if you avoid instant death, low voltage still offers plenty of injury. And especially in the wet conditions of a ship, where electric resistance can change depending on your contact surface, well, that guarantee against instant death is not so much of a guarantee, more like guidelines. 50 volts can still do a lot of damage. Think about this from a practical perspective. You don't see people out there just grabbing the posts of car batteries, and those batteries are only at 12 volts DC. So the moral of the story, electricity at any voltage still requires protection. From a system design perspective, higher voltages still present the same risk as a lower voltage, and they still require the same careful protection. So go ahead, consider going to higher voltages. Think about 96 volts DC or even higher, and just expect that protecting the system comes as a part of the design regardless of your final voltage. So the risks don't really change with electricity at higher voltage. Until we get to hundreds and hundreds of volts, you're basically looking at the same effort of protection either way. But what about the advantages? Are there benefits to going to a higher voltage? Well, generally, higher voltage means more torque for the same size of motor. The higher voltage also means smaller wires. Less copper required to conduct the same amount of power. That's important. Copper is heavy and it is expensive. These are all things that we want to minimize. So my general advice is go with the highest voltage that you can tolerate when you're looking at your propulsion power and expect that there will be protection for that no matter what voltage you pick. But here's the catch. Remember that you're selecting a system voltage. 
So this only works if you can find components at every point in the system that will work with that voltage. Now, this creates a pretty big problem when we're considering hotel loads. Things like lighting, electronics, your refrigerator, all those small components. Most hotel loads on your boat, they're going to run at 12 volts or 24 volts DC. So now we need to look at a dual voltage system, where we have one set of circuits for propulsion and a second set for all the hotel loads. Now, how do we combine those? Well, a DC voltage converter switches between the two system voltages. That makes the voltage converter a critical component. You have to find one that can work for both your hotel and your propulsion voltage settings. And these do not come in every shape and size. So make sure that you've found a source for this equipment that's going to work with both of your system voltages before you move forward in the design. Even with massive batteries, you probably still can't muster enough energy for extended use. And by extended, I'm talking days and days of propulsion. Most of your large electric setups are going to require a hybrid system, one that combines electric batteries with a diesel generator. When planning a hybrid system, your first choice to make is whether you want a serial or a parallel hybrid system. In a serial hybrid system, the generator supplies the power directly to the batteries, which then power the electric motor. All of that power goes straight through the electric system. But in the parallel hybrid system, the engine is directly connected to the propeller shaft, and it uses a gearbox that also includes an electric motor on the side. The engine and the motor work together to deliver that full power output. I think the parallel systems are the superior choice for larger yachts. That's because the larger yachts require a higher power output, and it can be a challenge to source the electrical components that meet that massive power demand. With a parallel hybrid, the engine supplies the majority of that power directly to the shaft. Your motor gets a lot smaller. Your entire electric system gets a lot smaller. Smaller wires, smaller batteries, smaller switches. That all turns into less weight and less cost. Then number two, I really like the redundancy that comes from this system. Either the engine or the electric motor can power the propeller. They can work independently. So that means if your engine suddenly conks out, the motor can still take over and prevent you from crashing into the dock. That redundancy is a great benefit. Also, when we consider the efficiencies, the electric motor can take over at lower speed propulsion and just let the engine shut down. That works great because at those lower RPMs, engine efficiency is pathetic. Your engine is designed to run at full speed. That's where it wants to be. But let's say you need a huge burst of power, even more than the engine. Well, these two can work together. You can have the engine and the electric motor combined, putting a lot of power into the propeller to get you out of a bad situation. The parallel hybrid systems, they just make sense for larger yachts. One of the things I really like about parallel hybrid systems is all the different ways that you can use them. There are actually six different modes of operation. You can have just the engine powering your propeller. You could have just the electric motor powering it. You could have both the engine and the motor providing power to that propeller to give a huge burst of speed. Or let's say you've also got a big hotel load running, like your AC. So you could have the engine putting power into both the propeller and the motor. Now you're using the motor as a generator to supply that huge power demand to your hotel loads. And that can work with just the motor alone. Decouple the propeller, have the engine feed its power into the motor using the motor as a generator. That's a really big generator supplying a lot of power. And then my favorite trick is the regeneration. You can decouple the engine, couple the propeller straight to the motor, and have the propeller drive the motor as a generator now. You're now harnessing electricity and energy from your environment. You've got a renewable energy source on board without adding any extra equipment. So where does the serial option make sense? I mean, it must have some use cases. Well, I would say that it's very beneficial for low speeds, harbor tugs, cases where you're going to be constantly revving your engine up and down. 
that's not good for engine efficiency. But an electric motor can respond very quickly in those cases, and that, that's wonderful. Getting that instant response out of the motor is a major benefit when you're maneuvering in harbor. I will also say that for smaller boats, it's a lot easier to balance the weight on this. Since we don't have a direct shaft connecting all of our components, we can space them out through the boat. And so that makes it a lot easier to put them where you need to have them from a weight perspective, rather than just one single line going straight from the propeller shaft. Now let's talk a little bit about efficiency. The argument here is that you don't want that gearbox on board because it reduces the efficiency. You just want a straight electrical system going from the batteries to the prop propeller. But you have to think about the compounding losses. Every component in your electric system has a little bit of efficiency loss. That's just how physics works. So take a look at the graph on your screen. I looked at the efficiency coming off of each one of these components. The red bit on top is the efficiency loss, and then the blue bar is the power we have left over. You'll notice that blue bar then becomes the total for the next component, and then the next, and the next. And so that we actually find out with a serial electric system, just assuming typical efficiency losses for the components, the total loss for that whole system is around 17%. 17%! That's pretty significant. And this is where the parallel system shows some real advantages because we're not putting the majority of our power into the electric system. The large component of the power is that straight connection from the engine to the gearbox. Granted, we have a little bit of efficiency loss in that gearbox, but it's a little bit out of a big component, and then that 17% that we saw in the electric side, that's 17% out of a little component. When we're combining electric power and engine power together, and looking at the total efficiency loss of that, we see that the total efficiency loss is only around 7.2%. And that's due to the power sharing scheme between the electric motor and the engine, and how we're taking advantage of the relative efficiencies behind those two. So I admit it, I think that parallel hybrid systems make a lot of sense for larger yachts. Well, where do you plan to put all of this equipment? It might seem like a small detail, but space becomes a major challenge on yachts, and you're going to have to think about the size of your components. A typical electric propulsion system is going to require several components. We've got the massive battery banks, we've got battery chargers, large inverters, an electric motor, a motor controller, we'll have some solar chargers, we're going to have wires that are as big as your hand, and we're going to have bus bar connections, digital controllers, and interfaces, and oh my! It has all the complexity of a diesel engine. But unlike a diesel engine, these components, they're not tightly integrated into one unit. They get mounted on your boat, they're spread across the bulkhead, and these components should all be accessible for maintenance. You're going to need two to three closets of space, or more, depending on your battery capacity. So before jumping into electric propulsion, make sure that your ship fits all of the equipment. Okay, let's wrap things up. Going electric, it grants you a lot of options, and dozens of decisions. You can create a custom design tailored to your individual needs. That's the fun part. But to control this chaos, it comes down to making a few key decisions first. Number one, pick your system voltage, and check that you can find all the components running at that voltage. Number two is pick your battery. Now, the exact chemistry is going to depend on your lifestyle. Number three, are you going with a parallel or a serial electric option? Myself, I prefer parallel, but there are advantages to serial as well. And then number four, where do you plan to put everything? Leave room for a tidy layout and think about how you're going to achieve that. These key questions can very quickly filter the choices and ease the workload of designing your electric system. So just take it one stage at a time, and don't be afraid to change your mind. You've got this. How on earth do they do it? Have you ever wondered how the large commercial ships do all these amazing things? DMS brings that same engineering to smaller operators. Take the chance to create a high-performance ship stand out from your competitors. So check out the website, and together, let's build something 
awesome. <laughs>